So hello and welcome. We are back with the NDTV election town hall. A chance for you to question the game changers of Battleground 2019. Either in person with this wonderful audience that we have here with us or you can ask us questions on Twitter and we'll put them to our newsmakers, to our game changers. Well, today we are very pleased to have with us Prashant Kishore. He's a political strategist who's now turned politician. He has gone from being a backroom player of Team Modi in 2014 to now becoming the inheritor of Nitish Kumar's Janata Dal United. Thanks very much indeed, Prashant, for talking Thank to you. us. Uh, send in your questions to us for Prashant with the hashtag AskPK on NDTV. Uh, we've already started getting some tweets, so we're going to take them during the show. But feel free to send us uh, these questions. Prashant Kishore, let me start by asking you, because yes. we are just literally now, what, about a week, 10 days after those very, very stunning results from the assembly elections. Were you surprised at all? Uh, not really. <laughs> not really. Because if you see, Rajasthan has been quite obvious to many people, much before the elections. Right. Uh, so has Chhattisgarh. Hmm. Or oh, even Chhattisgarh, because a lot of yes. people didn't see that coming. Uh, maybe the extent of loss might not have been obvious or known to many people. But, but your lot reading of was that Chhattisgarh was also I was going not, out of the BJP's hands. I, I wouldn't have any first-hand experience because I was in Bihar. I, largely, I'm of late, I'm in Bihar. But sure. what, whatever we were gathering at, uh, from Chhattisgarh, it looked tight. And Madhya Pradesh? Uh, Did that surprise you somewhat? Yes. I, I, I should say that I was surprised. So what is your... Big, uh, big, big reading from these results. What are what are they indicating, and what particularly are the signals that they're sending the BJP? Because these were straight Congress versus BJP fights. Well, if you want to extrapolate what we have just got uh, in this state elections, my sense is 2019 is wide open, open for everyone. It's open for BJP, it's open for NDA, it's open for UPA, it's open for any third, fourth person. So 2019 is now wide open, that's clear. It's not now. We have been telling this for quite some time, that hmm. anyone who calls elections one year before would be risking it a little bit too early. Hmm. Because you never know what happens six months, eight months, as you know, sure. your experience. It's a very long time in politics. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> Post-2014, hmm. while all this hype and hoopla about uh, BJP steamrolling everything, if you look carefully the data, uh, 2014 remains the peak yes. for BJP. Elections after election post 2014, including the UP elections, UP elections yes. BJP vote share has come down to 3 percentage point, 4 percentage point, 5 percentage point, 6, 8, 10. In these elections it has come down almost uh, 15, 16 percentage point. So, if someone says that it was not to be seen, mm. I think you were naive or you were just uh, uh, more interested in looking at the breaking news mm. or the, what was apparent on the surface. But beneath the surface, the data is always there. Okay, interesting. This is all the more interesting because you are an NDA ally, you are a BJP ally, but you are saying that it was hyped to suggest that the BJP was on this absolute dominant march to 2014. You are saying the signs were already there? And I'm now I, after this, I'm not saying it, it was is hyped by uh, a party or a political group. I'm saying it was hyped by those who analyze elections because you guys just uh, oh, look at Oh, now you're blaming us for I'm it. I'm not okay. blaming, <laughs> I, because see, but, the data always existed. Nothing prevented from med, uh, media from looking at these data. You looked at the outcomes, which were election no, results. But it wasn't just us. If you remember, there were leaders, including Nitish Kumar, who said, you know, this so, is now, this is this is all so over now. Forget 2014, uh, forget 2019, think of 2024. Look at carefully. In uh, 2014, post Lok Sabha elections, hmm. uh, BJP uh, could not secure majority in Maharashtra, right. though the government was, was formed. Right. BJP did not win Jharkhand on its own. Yes. Uh, compared to 2014, where the majority would be two-third. Sure. So, obvious the result was that I'm talking about 2014. 2015, BJP lost two elections. Both elections that were fought in 2015, BJP lost one to in Delhi and, and Bihar. in Bihar. 16, they did not win any other state other than Assam. Hmm. 
and in 17 yes up because it's an elephant in the room the right. it was talked as if everything has been won okay so interesting but that even, in UP, that the even in up even in up compared to 2014 bjp yeah. vote share came down by 3 percentage points this is not just you being sour grapes because you were part of the up campaign for the congress at that time but this, and you got the, wiped out no i'm saying whether it is sour grape for me or a sweet grape for me the <laughs> the data doesn't change okay. i'm i'm you're I'm, just talking on data I'm, because you're what, also a data person what i'm trying to tell you is that if someone is telling that no they are getting the sign only after these four, five elections. I'm just telling you, just go back and start looking okay. at the elections post-2014. In every election after, maybe um, Haryana, uh, Tripura would be an exception. But other than that, BJP's vote share has been coming okay, down this in is a very each interesting, state. Okay, this is a very interesting reading of a narrative which actually has always suggested the reverse, that the BJP is gaining in dominance is expanding its footprint but let me they, let me they just have come back to no 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 make no mistake they have expanded they have gained ground but, but the not, vote, to the, not to not the to extent, the extent that is being made not out. to the extent that has been okay, made out me, and certainly not to the extent what they achieved in 2014 okay let me ask you about what this is telling you as someone who's an analyst of indian politics about why this is happening vis-a-vis -vis the bjp are you seeing, and I'm talking particularly about these three states, because this was, as I said, Congress versus BJP straight fight. Do you sense that this is indicative of the fact that the Congress has improved its election game? Or are these people simply, are voters simply rejecting the BJP? I do not see a fundamental change uh, on front of Congress, on part you of don't. Congress. No, I don't see. And that, if I'm a BJP that is why I would be a bit more worried because if I would have lost these elections to a reformed Congress, mm. a very rejuvenated Congress, mm. possibly I would have been less worried. So what is this then telling This you? is telling me that it's elect vote against uh, BJP in those three states more than vote for Congress because, again, I give you another data point. Mm. In whole of India, mm. all mood of surveys are telling that Rahul Gandhi has advantage of, over Mr. Modi mm. as a preferred choice as, as prime minister in yes. south of india right now look the one election that has happened in south is telangana hmm. where congress despite having mahakutumbi wiped has been wiped off yeah so that is telling you that voters are far more intelligent than what the surveys throw at so you so you're saying that this is indicative that people are no longer stuck on the because the bjp had used the language of the congress saying it's tina you know there is no alternative there is no alternative to us you're saying voters are not bothered by that. My sense, they, my sense is, voter is far more smarter than what any one survey is throwing at you. Second is, in absence of a wave, which is not apparent, hmm. uh, unlike 2014, uh, you would see a state after a state will vote uh, differently from each other. No, but I want to pick you up on so the more you, important point so you when, made. When you, say, is, when you see the three state Congress being voted in. The Congress has been voted out in Mizoram. Congress has not been able to capitalize in sure. Telangana. So the story could change. But you're saying that voters are not simply willing to necessarily seek a alter viable alternative to the BJP. The anger is to the extent that they're simply saying, Aapko harana hai. Jeete ka kaun wo dusri baat hai. Uh, one way to look at it, you, you, could uh, you could interpret it that way. But uh, my sense is, why is in this? these three states, if I look at the, the way the people have voted, mm. it is not a massive support for Congress except for maybe Chhattisgarh. It is more A of, negative against the BJP. Uh, yeah, and because BJP vote share has not come down drastically in those two states. What is in your, so you're saying the Congress has not done much to f uh, fix its game. What is the BJP? If Congress, if there would have been... What a, is the BJP doing wrong? No, see, if co there would have been a wave in favor of Congress... The one state they should have won is in South because that is where Rahul Gandhi is apparently very popular, sure. much more popular than Mr. Modi. Sure. So what I'm trying to tell you is that the state where, because many surveys you hear yeah. that Mr. Modi is so popular yeah. and a state you, uh, is, is, still you see uh, BJP losing those three states. And the state where Rahul Gandhi is very popular, you saw Congress losing. What is, what is the BJP getting wrong in your view? 
No, that is for BJP to decide. I am nobody to advise BJP. No, what no, no. I am not asking you to wrong. advise the BJP. I am yes. asking you to analyze no, what they are getting I'm, wrong. I am sure they have very experienced people. They now, know how to now analyze. You, are, now, you see, this is the problem. <laughs> no. Now you are answering like a Neta. No, so not. far you are not. No, so I'm, far you are answering I'm, like I'm, the Prashant I'm, Kishore I knew. I'm, I'm, this is I'm, a typical I'm, Netaji answer. I am stating the fact, which is the, the much hyped one-way traffic electoral traffic was never the case okay. but media or otherwise people who are interested in analyzing and discussing politics were not willing to you uh, analyze those or look at those numbers they were just looking at the final result have you do you do you have any regrets that you may have picked the wrong side no not at all i'm very you may, you may have you may have thrown in your lot with the losing side no. At, at this rate, at what you, if but, this, but is, if again, this continues. But this is again a misnomer that you know anyone has a crystal ball to know which is side is going to win. Only people who know which side was winning was the me, is the media. Because after election comes, you have the liberty <laughs> to say, okay, we knew that Margaret Bandhe would have won in Bihar. Yeah, uh, we uh, always hume pata, said. Hume pata tha ji, 2014 mein Modi ki wave hai. <laughs> but it happens only post election. But Prashant, now do a little bit of crystal ball gazing. I'm going to come back to push you on why you think the BJP is losing ground. But before that, tell me, if this kind of trend continues, what do you see could be a likelihood in 2019? Because if people are actually so upset that they're going to be willing to vote you out if there's no alternative, do you see a, could this be uh, I, significant? I see still, if I have to, put my neck out, I still see NDA having the best chance to form the government. Okay. Now, within NDA, what would be the composition of different parties uh, is something One theory no one says, can... there is one sort of set of theorizing that's going on in Delhi circles, which you may have heard of, that they feel that at this rate, the BJP could actually crash and come down to even like a 150, 160 level. If people are so upset that they're willing to vote them out. Do you think that's realistic? Uh, but that's, that's what people... The people might be discussing in Delhi, but that do you, might not do you be think it's a, Do you think it's a possibility? See, anything is possible in politics, but okay, my, I, I, bets again. I, I, I still, see, no, I'm not hedging my okay. bet. I still, if I have to put my money, I would still put on an NDA government than any other formation forming the government in 2019. Okay, talk about the NDA, because that's something that you are a member of. You're part of the JDU. Is it safe to at least say that the BJP can no longer think that they can go into this election on their own. They have to build a coalition, they have to build allies, and at the moment, the NDA is not a very happy house. Okay, so I don't know BJP if BJP is saying that they are going alone, because it, even 2014 elections were fought as no. NDA, BJP got majority on its of own. Of course, but, but that they should be the, much the, more... The allies who were there, whether Shiv Sena, whether sure, Akalis, sure. Uh, and few others, they were always there. But at the moment, there is literally no NDA. That is for NDA leadership to comment. But I'm too new to be commenting about whether NDA is functional uh, in letter and spirit or not. But, but on paper, uh, but on, on paper uh, NDA has almost 30 parties today. But they are all unhappy. The Shiv Sena is uh, unhappy. Uh, uh, the Akalis are unhappy. I don't know how the you gauge unhappiness. But if, if that well, is, by the very strong statements they make, Mr. Paswan's party is unhappy. And Mr. Kushwaha's party has left the NDA. No. Okay. So, Mr. Paswan is very much part of NDA and I don't see there is any problem on his side. Okay. That much I can tell you. Whatever little I uh, gather with my interaction with them, uh, I do not see much of problem with the major, other major, uh, major allies like Sri Sena or uh, Akalis. Hmm. Upendra Kushwaha leaving the NDA? But Upendra Kushwaha, it was his choice. He left. I don't think that's significant. It's not going to damage you in Bihar? I don't think so. I don't think NDA with the three existing allies is a formidable force electoral machine in Bihar. Uh, BJP, Nitish Kumar and Ramilas Paswan is very formidable for any combination to take on. But even with your own party, yes, there is still no announcement on seat sharing. This no, has been the, going has on been, for weeks. No, no it has, has been it? announced almost two months back uh, that both BJP and JDU will fight equal number of seats in in, in Bihar. But that actual number has not been but announced? Actual number is just a matter of uh, speculation or just a matter of just putting one number here or there. But it's, by and large, it's known. It's done? Yes, it's done deal. The, uh, the, the seat sharing has been finalized? Yes, it's it's, done. It's, 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 it has come from none less than the both party presidents. 
No, but can you tell us what the final figure is? No, the final figure is anyone's guess because if both these parties are, fight, uh, uh, are fighting equal number of seats, hmm. the number would be anything between 15 to 18. So, there is no other possibility. Right, because there are total 40 seats. There are 40 seats. Uh, seats so in Bihar. Uh, you know, so, you could end up fighting what, 17 each? And 17, six 15, one? 16, 18. Uh, the number will… So, if one has to make a guess and you will guess uh, out of these four numbers, one will turn out to be true. But if everything is so hunky-dory, why is the announcement still not come out? Because, see, which other alliance in the state has come out with the exact seat number? Mm. Uh, in India, unfortunately or fortunately, we do not announce these seat numbers and which, which party is fighting which seat so early. And there is still five, six months left. That is the old India. That is the old style of politics. You no, are supposed to be no, signaling a new politics. But you should… It, it, so, show pe but, if it's but, so, if but it's I'm, all done. No, but that is, it's a new style of politics and that is why you saw the announcement was made almost eight months, seven months before elections. But explain something to me that, you know, why do we see that the JDU is… Do you think… Okay, let me rephrase this. You sent out a tweet. I mean, let's put that tweet up on the screen. In the middle of all these allies, all of them expressing their problems with the NDA, you put out a very safe tweet. Joint efforts and collective strength of all the coalition partners in the NDA are key to a success. All constituents must work towards this. Yes. Now, this it's, is as Sarkari and as much of a, but, you know, a see, typical Neta speak as you can get. But you see… But uh, read, but help us now read between the lines. But it's not, there is nothing to read between the lines. It is very much there, right? Uh, uh, as you can read that right. NDA, what I'm telling you right now, that if I have to put my money, I'll put it on NDA, uh, securing, uh, reaching closer to 20, uh, 272 or in better than that. And that is what I have written there. That but is the BJP behaving like a big brother within the NDA? Every mm. other constituent thinks no, I don't, to think I, so. You don't, no, you're the no, only I, party I, that I, doesn't think so. No, I, in Bihar, I don't think they're behaving like a big brother. You know, JDU has the chief minister. I do not see BJP interfering in... Any which no, but way, overall, which is, overall as a, as a political party, are no, they Overall, I cannot speak for other parties, but I do not see, uh, you know, BJP, with my own first-hand experience, BJP acting in any manner which is not appropriate in Bihar, at least, with JDU. Okay, then let me ask you this. How, and we're starting to get some tweets. Let's take a tweet from somebody called Saqib Imran. He says, how are you going to counter your alliance's partner's communal politics? And this is something that I've always been interested to ask you about because you are somebody who has moved across parties, has moved across ideologies. Uh, you continue to remain fairly close to Narendra Modi, as in you have regard for him. He has regard for you. I, I don't. Do you still meet him or? I, I, I do, but that's inconsequential. Okay, that I have joined because I have joined JDU. But since you joined JDU, have you met him at all? Yes, but. That is not uh, something that matters much because okay, I, I, believe in, I, I, I believe in ideology of JDU and that's why I'm in JDU, I'm not in BJP. But what I'm curious about is that your, uh, at least your silence about this communal aspect of the BJP, which is something that has always been there. But today we are seeing it at a greater intensity than ever before. No, I, if, if you look at Mr. Nitish Kumar's uh, statements and the, uh, the communication which he uh, is out there in public, he yes. has been talking ad nauseum about not compromising on three C's, corruption, crime and uh, communalism. Hmm. So I really don't know why uh, you would see that we have uh, been soft on any one of these three C's. Because you still are close to Mr. Modi and you have regard for Mr. Modi and Mr. Modi presides but, over a but, party but, but, under whose but watch any, we have seen but, but, a huge spike. But then you are saying that anyone, any, anyone who is close to Mr. Modi, anyone who uh, is close to Mr. Modi has to believe in communalism. That's what you are saying? No, I mean, I am asking you, don't you have a problem with that part of his political See, worldview, his uh, political uh, ideology? Mr. Modi, I know and have worked with. I have never seen the shades of communalism in him, at least the Mr. Modi, I have worked and uh, uh, and know of. You're, you're you have looked at 2014. No you have looked at 2014 campaign yourself. Yes. Tell me a single element in that campaign which you would term as a communal campaign. One second. No, tell me. Don't go about the futuristic speculation. Okay. Go by what we have done in 2014. Okay. Firstly, I say in 2014. That, no, no. Hold on. I'll was say, the number one. Was the campaign communal? Okay. Let me ask you a counter question. Do you only look at someone's record from the day you meet them, or do you look? 
at their entire political record. Look at the 15 years before that. No, see, as a Gujarat chief minister, see, the campaign he ran, the speeches so, he made. See, if you start, if you, if, if, if you start opening up history, there would not be a single politician, or there would be not many politicians in India and political parties with whom you can work. But this is not this the is same not, thing. This is not again, medieval. It, this is not it, medieval it, India. We're no, talking about the past, so, you know, 10, 15 years. So that's what I'm trying to tell you that. For 10 years, you, you can have the similar instance or similar things to complain about against literally every leader and every party in India. And that's unfortunate as it is, but, but that's the reality. To, but when it comes to communalism, he actually did make a statement. He made a speech repeatedly referring to pink revolution in during the 2014 campaign. Again and again, he brought up this idea about no, cow this, slaughter this, no, no, no. See, this without pink, any evidence. This pink revolution word was there on the website of ministry at that time. And he mentioned it on a couple of occasions that in India, why are we talking about this? Hmm. To the best of my recall, because this is part of 2014 uh, yes. uh, uh, communication campaign. Yes. campaign. Yes. So I, I know what exactly you are referring to. Pink Revolution was actually written on the website of the government but of India. But he put it in a very different way. Though. No, no, no. And there was a clarion call there hmm. that we have seen the Green Revolution, we have seen the White Revolution. Now let's aim to have a pink revolution yes and we, th that was written in the context of uh, increasing beef export and he would have used it uh, uh, just to say that you know as as a country where yes. bovine meat is not necessarily uh, vast majority of india is very comfortable with yeah he might have used it in that context but that but is it was, not but it was but it was not the, it was not the phrase that was coined by him i know but it was used in a completely misleading context because what we export is buffalo not beef and he seemed to link the two. No, he, he did not uh, link it to the best of my knowledge. Okay, actually yes. we can go back to the speech. No, we can. You can. And we can, we I, can debate I tell it. You because I, but I tell you because I have looked at this phrase. I was part of the team okay. uh, at that time and I would have looked at his speeches. I don't think he has on his own come out and said anything on the pink revolution. Okay. You should must get the ministry's website also which has actually mentioned I this. Have, I, okay, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I've actually looked at no, those pages I, I, very closely. I, I, I again, I, and I, I I'm again, happy to I, come back no, to I you. I again challenge you. Go back yes. to the 2014 campaign. Tell me the elements in 2014 campaign, which you found I just found gave you an example, but you rejected it. No, I'm so not rejecting. I'm giving you the real explanation. Okay. I, uh, 2014 campaign, yeah. if it was communal in any which way, please let me know. Okay. But if you take away 2014 campaign, just for the sake of argument, if you no, look at what is happening the with the that's the fact. Okay, no, uh, but, unless, but you, saying, unless you unless you prove that no, this was so the I'm campaign saying, which but we, in but, we, but we agree to disagree on pink revolution. We agree to disagree on the fact so that you won't look at his not, record. No, no, I tell you, I tell you, in 2014 campaign, it, it started with his uh, mega rallies. It started with the town hall here, the mega rallies, the manthan, which was a youth interaction. The Statue of Unity, the no, no, Sardar no, no, campaign. No, no, we don't. No, want, we don't. No, no, the no, 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 we don't want the. We don't want the tell entire me, list no, of 2014 tell me, campaign. Tell me a single campaign module in 2014 that you found communal. I just, as I said, we agree you to disagree are, you, on Pink Revolution. You are taking the see the. There Let are, me ask you about today, the BJP. Because today you are an ally of no, the... I, I might be a ally, but today I do not run the narrative of BJP. I do not run the communication of BJP. I do not necessarily... But they are not asking me what to say and what to what not to say. No, no, of course. But as an ally, you can take a stand on positions taken by the leading alliance partner. For example, just today, news has come that they have asked, an order has been passed by the Home Ministry that in addition to giving intelligence agencies, investigating agencies, the power to surveil our phones, they will now have free license to surveil our computers as well, computers and related equipment, which is something that is being widely condemned across the political spectrum. See, I, I, Your I, thoughts on this? My, my, I'm always for the choice of citizens. I'm freedom, uh, I believe in the freedom of choice and okay. any kind of state interference for surveillance for right region or wrong regions is something which we should not. You think Except. it's a this this order? I do not know the mistake. I do not know the context in which government has issued a statement, but I am making a larger point that mm -hmm. uh, uh, democracy is our biggest strength. Okay. We shouldn't turn into a surveillance state. Okay. Good. I'm glad at least uh, we got you to to clarify on that. Let me ask you about the fact that now, when it comes to you now as JDU. You uh, became the inheritor of this party at, a, I must say, a very young age for Indian politics. Uh, I'm not an inheritor. Well, <laughs> why do you, why, why do because you Nitish Kumar said, Prashant Kishore is the future. What more 
uh, a clear signal can anybody give of you know of you no, being an I, I, I'm there to do whatever little I could do as uh, I was interested in working in Bihar in Bihar or beyond I looked around and mm. only party I could have uh, called as a my party and uh, feel comfortable with its ideology and work methods and uh, the opportunity which I would get was JDU but and that's why I am in JDU. Okay, but uh, and above all, I have the greatest respect for Nitish Kumar as an administrator, as a leader. But I want to ask you because we have young people here, and I'm going to go across to them in a second. I've also seen that you've taken out some ads that say if you want to join politics, join yes. Prashant Kishore. We can actually put up some of those on, no, on screen. It's not join Prashant Kishore. What I, uh, this is one thing which I have started after joining JDU is one of my goals is to. Here uh, it is. It says, yes. uh, okay, it uh, says, Kishore ke saath. So Prashant I have been, Kishore ke saath. So it says, says join so Prashant Kishore. No, it's, it, if you have to join me, that means you have to join JDU. So, but what I'm trying to do is to, I've started this youth in politics. I genuinely believe that uh, we need more young people to come in politics but who let otherwise me ask you, would not have why come. Should, okay, so why should young people come to JDU? Nitish Kumar is seen as someone who is as his rivals call him, a paltu chacha, paltu mama, wo palatte rehte hain. he keeps changing his stance. With all respect, you have also switched from Modi to Congress to Nitish Kumar. So Why, there, would there, people, there, why should people so trust the, Nitish Kumar or trust First, you? let me answer my part. I, I, this is the first party I have joined and this is my first and the, hopefully last? the last party. Uh, you're not saying last, you're already no. saying hopefully. Yes, so. because I cannot be saying something what will happen 30, 40 years down the line or 10 years down the line. but. But for I, now, you are with the JDU. I am with the JDU and I am not changing. Don't, okay. don't worry about it. Okay. Those who call uh, Mr. Nitish Kumar Paltu Ram or Paltu Chacha, whatever, hmm. I do not want to comment on that. But you as an experienced journalist, tell me a party or a leader in India who in last 15 years or 20 years has not turned sides at least thrice or four but times. But Prashant, that becomes what about you? That doesn't become no, 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 a pitch no, no. to inv uh, encourage no, no, young people no, because no, then I, they'll say, what's I'm not the difference between... JDU and any other party. No, I'm telling no. I'm telling them what is the difference. The difference is that you have a leader who is not corrupt. You have a leader who is not necessarily promoting dynasty. Hmm. You have a leader who has delivered over 15 years in one of the most difficult state to govern. Hmm. And uh, uh, in Prashant Kishore, you have someone who can handhold you hmm. uh, in as you start uh, your political career. So if I have advised big leaders for whatever it is worth. I want to spend my next two years, three years advising those who wants to become Mukhya, who wants to win Jila Parishad, who wants to become MLA, who mm. wants to become MP in the next 10, 15 years. The mm. campaign is about that, mm. that get one lakh people to join politics. And I'm starting in Bihar because that is where I have a political platform. And not only join politics, mm. make 15, 20,000 of them fight elections in the next four, five years. No, but you're saying that Nitish Kumar is this amazing politician. Who is who's not corrupt? Who's run this extraordinary I state? I can tell you. I can tell you, so well. Vashu, I can tell you with but my first hand experience. He was wiped out in I, 2014. Yes, I can tell you for, with first hand experience. There are very few politicians in India today who can claim to be non-corrupt after being on chair for 10, 15, 20 years. Nitish Kumar undoubtedly is one of them. Okay, that's a very very sweeping statement to make. I'm, I'm sure you, Nitish no, Ji's uh, rivals you, may, I, I can, may not agree. But uh, no if you one, take no aside, one, no, you cannot get a single person who would call uh, Nitish Kumar a corrupt leader. Okay. Secondly, Next. look at me. I do not I do not belong to his caste. I'm certainly not part of his family. I'm not uh, coming from his uh, hmm. school, uh, political school of thought, which is socialist hmm. uh, thinking. And I'm not coming from his hometown or home he, state. He, uh, yet and he, yet he handed some, over the party. He has, not handed the party. Over, he has not handed over the party, but he has given me something to do. That itself shows but that if, you're he, saying, if you have okay, something... But let's, let, let, if you say corruption aside, Reliability. Why, why, why corruption is not an issue? No, I'm asking why, about reliability. Are you, you're saying that all as, parties, all parties, all as, leaders have switched sides. No, no. He's but as, the manner in which he's, he is. He's, he's as reliable as any other politician in India. And start from Kerala, go up to the Kashmir, start from Gujarat, go up to Arunachal Pradesh. Okay. Those who you so, will call today reliable, I can, and you have the better history of them than I would know. They would have turn three times, four times, look at Chandrababu Naidu, look at DMK, so look at Mamta Ji, look at Mayawati Ji, look at even for that matter, okay, can Lalu, I no, can no, ask you? those who are calling him Paltu Chacha, yes. ask, because he's a young guy, just ask him, they just see, no, yeah, yes, just ask him that in Vishwanath Pratap Singh government, where was his father? 
Okay. Where was his father? No, no, no. One second. Can was, I was not that government supported okay, by can BJP? Can I also respond and because I am supposed to be the anchor here? <laughs> so, if I, if I may, no one is disputing that we do not have dal badlus and paltus in Indian politics. Let me finish the question. The point is that if you are positioning… Why are you singling out Nitish Kumar? Only because you are giving us the hard sell on Nitish Kumar. No. Because of that. I tell and you I'm why. Sitting no, and talking I, to no, you. I'm not, I'm not giving you a hard sell on that part. I'm giving you a hard sell. Can you deny the fact that Bihar under him mm. has prospered in last 14, 15 years? Can you deny the fact that he is one of those uh, leaders who is still honest? Can you deny the fact that he is one of those who are not necessarily promoting his dynasty, his son, his... You know, someone in IIT Delhi asked me, right. that, oh, you are there because his son is not interested in politics. But in, in India, if you don't have your son, you'll put your wife. You don't have your wife, then you put some, some of your relatives. Okay. And so, yeah. please give him the due where it is uh, due. If he has some flaws, he's, no one is ideal. If he has some flaws, you see, the problem is why Delhi media is especially very upset about his turning this side. My assessment is that a lot of those who saw in Nitish Kumar a challenger to Modi hmm. actually wanted him to fight their battle in yes. some sense. See, some people he, have come out and said that openly. Yes, and, and they feel that, okay, they feel let down. So that is a possibility and that's why media is so But regardless of whether the media felt upset or not, the fact is he did do it. Let's start, take did, some, did, let's ta did. Let's start taking some questions. I have uh, somebody... Haider, is it, uh, who had a question? Yes, if we can get a mic across to him, or do we, you already have a mic. Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, so my first question was, as a political strategist, uh, how do you uh, differentiate between uh, the monetary uh, compulsions of being strategist and uh, the moral uh, uh, conceptions of uh, informing the citizen? Okay, let me, let me rephrase that question and ask you something which a lot of people have always wondered, and I have also wondered, that how much money did you get? To I, run all I, these I, I tell political you, I'm, campaigns. I, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so glad that you're asking this question and I hope as and when I will get into And I want an honest answer. But I'm telling you. I don't you, want the answer I'm, which I think I suspect I, which I, I know you're going to give. I, I'm happy to open my bank account okay. and show to you that how much money anyone would have paid to me, Prashant Kisor. Not a single penny would be paid by any one of these people to huh. Prashant Kisor. Because first of all, they did not hire me as a political strategist as you think. I came to work... Just as an aid, no one pays the hundreds of crores as so media reports. You, no, no. So you're saying you want to attract young people, but you know, young people expect candor. They expect frankness. Yes, you I'm being. You expect all these uh, people I'm, to I'm, believe I'm, that you did it for the love of no, of the I, country, I, I, for I, the love I, of Modi I did, I did it. I did it because I wanted to learn. I wanted to make name for myself. I wanted to create a space for myself, and that's too big a reward to be. Uh, but but your but IPAC, which is the consultancy you ran, they got someone paid them. So IPAC, no, but again, why don't you, IPAC's returns are there in the public domain. Hmm. Just go and look at the money which IPAC gets and what they make in terms of their top line and bottom line. This is not something which is hidden uh, beneath tax the surface. Tax returns are normally not in the public domain. So unless no, you have, it is. you've chosen no, to put no, it. I no, mean, I can't access there. your no, tax please. return, you can't access no, mine. No, please, no, the, uh, as a company, yes. because IPAC is a registered company. So their tax returns are very much in public domain. Okay, what you, I think what you're saying is not the tax returns, but their ROC filings before yes, the Ministry so, of so Company no, Affairs. Yes, yeah. uh, ROC tells you all uh, your top line and bottom line. Okay, so we'll inform. certainly look please, at it. But since we're here, why don't, you, why don't you enlighten us? See, what is, all, the, what all is what the top line and bottom I, I line I tell you, what, what people pay is actual cost of the individuals who work with uh, setup like IPAC. I give an example of 2014, much hyped election, which you hear that it was very yes. how much expensive. Did you, how much did I yes, I'm, I'm coming. Yeah. I'm coming to it. that time. It was called uh, CAG. In CAG, when I first met people uh, and I asked them how much we will have to pay for you to leave your prestigious job or lucrative life wherever you are, uh, how much we'll have to pay, and we asked people to put the number in a chat, and the average came out to be 27,000 because hmm. the, all people wanted was to get out of pocket expenses covered. Hmm. The CAG used to pay 50,000 rupees per person per month as subsistence allowance. So say at Where the peak- Where did that money come from? I'm, 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 hmm. I'm coming to it. Okay. So at the peak, say CAG would have 1,000 people, which would create so much of news that, oh God, 1,000 people have come working with Mr. Modi, leaving their uh, MNC's job and et cetera, et cetera. Just multiply 50,000 with, with 1,000 uh, with thousand people. Yeah. How much is that? It's five crores, it's nothing compared to the election budgets. It's nothing. Who paid that amount? It, 
it's party which pays. If you are party, working, party, uh, BJP, BJP yes. wrote the check for five crores for that. Yes, yes. If whatever the expense is is paid by the parties. So if you open up the IPEC uh, returns, you will see when we were in Bihar, the money coming from JDU. If you uh, we, when we were working in Punjab and UP, the money came from Congress. And you're now also working with uh, Jagan. So the in money, Andhra. the money would be coming from YSRCP party. There is not a big see. But none of that comes to you. It only comes to IPAC. IPAC. And how are then, you? I'm telling you. But I'm you are also running I, I, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a telling house. You, in la ghar kaise chala in, in last five years, hmm. if anyone can prove a single penny moving from IPAC or CAG to Prashant Kishore's account, I will take whatever you say. Okay. So how is Prashant Kishore running my, his ghar? So, yes. So that's what I'm saying. My expense is also covered by those I'm working, which is it's complete. The whole model is reimbursement. Whatever expense is there, you uh, have to reimburse. Okay, so then in that sense, you are receiving reimbursement for your for your expenses. That is what you spend on the work, you get back. Yes, Don't, that's it. You, you do not make any profit, and you cannot walk into IPAC or Prashant Kishore and say, "Okay, I'm giving you five minutes." Why don't you see? You talk to Amrinder Singh, ask him how much money he has paid. You talk to Modi, ask him how much money he has Prashant, paid. You talk to Nitish Kumar and ask him how much. What do you think? Okay, one second. Do you think realistically? Realistically, calm down. Realistically, you think any politician is ever going to honestly answer that question, "How much money I have paid?" But I'm telling you, I mean, that is, I'm, that I'm is telling, not going no, to happen. I'm, but I'm telling you something. If those who are running the country, if you are not believing them, so you are saying everyone is. Lying, except for what you your no, perception no, no. I, is. I'm not saying that. I'm saying when it comes to political expenses All, see, and political no, finance, I'm, I'm, there is another way to look at it. There's I'm, a I'm lot of opacity. You. Yes, people there is. are not transparent. So there there, there so, are two things. So that's why. So no, no, there are two things. The political campaign might have got money which is accounted or not accounted. But when you are talking about IPEC CAG, forget about who pays. Those who receive money from IPEC. Okay. No, no, no. Can hold I ask on, you a question? On. No, no. Le can yeah, I, this can has I become. The, you're not even allowing me to speak. No. This has become a monologue. Can no. I? I'm the anchor. I'm invoking no, the anchor's right to ask you one question. No, no. If you're saying that it is only, I accept. You're saying it's only reimbursement, no profit. And through so the check. The, okay, through check. the check. Okay, accept, accept, accept check. it. Accept it. Accept it. Accept it. If it's that, then all these young people who are working for you, I'm sure some of them are very skilled. You get very yes. good talent from IIMs and and yes, so on and yes. IITs. They come for the experience. They are not. There's they, there's nothing for them to take home. No, no profit. No, there is a huge thing to for them to take home. No, no, I'm talking I, monetarily. But I'm telling you, not. I tell you what they take Which, home. Which uh, because those who come, you have to first understand who comes to work at IPAC. They want to experience politics without necessarily joining politics. They want to create a huge weight on their CV. If I tell you the number of people who have gone to uh, Ivy League colleges after spending a couple of years or three years in IPAC, right? You would be surprised to know. Because it's not about ten thousand extra of twenty thousand extra. Right. It's the experience. It's about uh, learning. It's about um, improving your CV. It's about something which otherwise you would not get to work, uh, get to do in in your lifetime. Uh, let me complete one thing. Okay. With you. Can, I I, can I take some audience I, I questions now? Because you said leaders will never tell you how much money they paid. Mm. I I challenge you to go other way around. Those who received money, because they are not all in my control. There are more than three thousand people who have come, worked with CAG or mm. IPAC, and have gone. Ask them. If they have got a single penny in cash from us, okay. Every penny they have got, they have got it through check, and that is accounted. Okay. Let me just get some questions from the audience. Akhilesh is here somewhere with us. Yes, uh, you had a question. Uh, so my question pertains generally, excuse me, yeah. pertains to the Home Ministry's order today, right? So IPAC, if you visit the IPAC website, it's always looking for data mining experts, for Python experts. So where does IPAC draw the line? Because data is important for you. Data is important for your mic, as you have mentioned, for your micro and macro decision make political decision making. Where do you draw the line that this See, I, is I, in, what you don't many, consider? Many interviews, I have said this. Like uh, us, even this whole uh, quote unquote big data is so much overhyped in India and overestimated. Data is important, but not something that can make a difference in the electoral outcome. But you use a lot of data. I, we do use a lot of data for understanding. We do uh, use a lot of data to uh, reach people. But well, where do you but get that, that is from? Through the campaigns. But that is the difference because someone said, looked at this Cambridge Analytica and they mine data from Facebook. We started campaign where Facebook was not even used as a campaign uh, platform. But once you start using Facebook, then you have a lot of data. I give an example. If you, you don't actually use 
means which may not entirely be above board to like a lot of political analysts, See, party strategists uh, buy buy raw data from the no, data black market. I tell like you, cell phone why, numbers why so I on. don't need to buy data is because we generate so much data on our own. For example, in Gujarat in 2012, we started for the first time what is called missed call campaign. If you want Mr. Modi as a CM, give a missed call. Hmm. The 60 lakh people called. Okay. Then I have those 60 lakh data to reach. I don't need to go and do what Cambridge Analytica quote unquote was trying to do. I don't need to mine data on Facebook to know more about you. Some many people, we generate interest and data points by through the campaigns. If I'm running Chai Pacharcha and I'm asking you if you want to join, if you want to participate, call. Okay, so you're getting, you call, your, you you're getting your data, data from, uh, you're campaigns. saying you're getting your data from your campaign, you're not actually buying it. Uh, we're sort because, of, because we're then, running out of time. Let me come back to 2019 and the big picture. nobody who can sell data. Uh, that big data is not available anywhere in India. What are we talking about? Okay, let me ask you as we're running out of time, about 2019, again, going back, what do you see with Rahul Gandhi now? Do you see any change in him? If you were to identify one or two things that you think has changed See, with Rahul in the past, I don't know, since you, since you worked with him. Success and victory always makes you much more confident. Hmm. Uh, so I'm sure he's much, much more sure about his own uh, 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 strategies and what he think is you the think right thing You think Rahul has do. become more confident now? Anyone does. If you are successful, you become confident. If you are not successful, you become a bit more skeptical. This is nothing unique to Rahul or anybody else. What is What is his biggest weakness in your view, having worked with him, having worked with the Congress? It is. I, I, I'm too small a person to comment oh, about. come on. Uh, Here, we Here we go again. Here we go again. Weakness this and is, all. This is, I have I'm been, not I, expecting, I, I have, ex I, I, accepting or expecting I, this from I, you. I have, been, I have been telling this, that though anyone who, uh, ten, uh, such an uh, old party like Congress has uh, chosen uh, to lead as their leader, uh, you have to give him time. You have to trust that he has the ability and leave no, it to the wisdom it, of Congress. No, okay. So forget Rahul. Would you say what is the biggest one weakness that the Congress has? Is it the fact that they are too much of a legacy party? Congress is like an old house. Risk? Congress is like an old house. It's very difficult to, if you have an old house versus a flat, it, as you and I know, it's very difficult to maintain an old house because you will have some CPAs coming here and there, you, some air passing from here. It, it has got its own legacy, it has got its own... Uh, Doesn't sound very appealing the way you describe it, like an old but house no, that's about to collapse. No, I, I didn't say it, it's about to collapse. People but it has, its, it has its problems. Because it's an, uh, it, it has its problems or uh, uh, shortcomings because it's a 100 year old party. So uh, obviously any institution which is 100 year old or more than 100 year old would have its own shortcomings and issues so that they need to that's a, that's your saying, that's a problem. But when you see Rahul now, because he was never, a, you, and this was your assessment, I've heard you say this, that he was not a risk taker in the way, yes. same way that Narendra Modi uh, was or continues to be. Uh, do you see that changing? So like, for example, with the hug, so, so, you know, so, with, so, with, so, with his big so hug me, for Modi. Let me first tell what I said. I said risk taker versus status quoist, uh, more of a status quoist. Now, is that all, all risk taking is not necessarily good. And all status quoist may not be wrong. Ah, that's a good, so, that's a good so point. So that's what I said last time. Uh, whether he is becoming more, uh, whether I, I say I definitely see like any other individual, he would be more confident because he has got the victory under his belt. He would be able to do what he. Okay, thinks on, right I've asked you on Rahul. I'm asking you now on Narendra Modi. What is his biggest strength, even now? You think? Uh, I have already said he's a risk taker. Uh, strength, I think, is a, a thing which a lot of people do not know about him. Mm -hmm. He's a great listener. Uh, from his personality, it doesn't come across maybe. Hmm. Uh, he comes across as someone who is all-knowing, all, -knowing, all, uh, uh, all you know, speaking. All speaking, but he's a great listener. I haven't come across a politician who is as good a listener as Mr. Modi. And one big weakness. I, he's a prime minister. I, it's about oh, my paycheck. Come on. It's about my come paycheck. On, it's come it's on, about my paycheck to uh, Listen, look at the weakness the of the prime minister. Why, the reason why he listens to you uh, is because you're able to tell him what's what. You're not just sitting there praising him. So you don't have to give this sort of safe answer. No, I'm not I'm, giving a safe answer. I'm he telling can't, you what No one thing. is perfect. Yes. So what is one, one weakness or at least something that needs to be fixed? I think uh, uh, the kings need to be benevolent. So maybe if he, if I would have to change one thing in Mr. Modi, hmm. I would uh, urge, plead, request him to be a bit more benevolent. Be more benevolent. Yes. Be be less. Uh, 
Vin, I mean, what's the? I, I would say, say this, more, I, I would not. I would not so get into. Don't be so harsh. Uh, I just be benevolent. Let things go a little bit. Acha. Okay. King should be benevolent. King should be benevolent. As you okay, raise, that's all. Uh, that's all we're going to get out of you as far as Narendra Modi is concerned. We'll take a short break. Don't go away. Coming up, much more with Prashant Kishore. We're going to put him through a rapid fire. Welcome back. Uh, oh, we're still clapping. Okay, lovely. So, welcome back. We're with Prashant Kishore, strategist, now Neta. Uh, fascinating to hear him on 2019. Let's just uh, get some last questions from the audience. Uh, I have Smithy here uh, who wants to ask a question. Yes, go ahead, Smithy. Um, I just wanted to ask that you uh, were the face of professional campaign management, which was hitherto not seen in Indian politics, and now you getting directly involved into politics as like a politician. Doesn't that dilute the entire purpose of professional campaign management as a value-neutral profession? And also, I think you had a question about the JDU as well. Am yes, I right? that was an important question, yeah, especially what considering that? what you were saying yeah. in the uh, entire discussion. That uh, now that you are the face of JDU uh, and you have been very active in the university camp, like elections as well, uh, would like what is to stop from JDU becoming more ambitious, like back in 2014, and leaving the NDA and playing it solo? <laughs> Nitish for prime minister, or that's now. No, I think out of the, uh, 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 out of the question. Uh, no, we have we are focused in Bihar. Uh, we are a very small party, and uh, we should not be over ambitious. But are you t are you going to run? Are you going to contest? No, I have told that I I'm not going to fight any Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha elections for at least ne next ten years. Why not? Because I want to remain in Bihar. I want to do what I am doing, which is to get more youth in politics on JDU platform, okay. which is a very time-consuming process. I have given myself two years to get one lakh people to politics and help 10, 15,000 of so them to fight elections. you don't want to be an MP? You don't want no, to be don't an want MLA? To. How, no. will you, how will you then leave uh, this party? No, I, you, I'm not... You know, uh, I, elected, did not say, elected, I, I did uh, not say MLA, but I'm not coming out uh, uh, in parliament. I'm not coming out of Bihar, uh, so I'm not a contender for uh, Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. Okay, but you could fight the assembly elections. Assembly elections, yes, if party so desires in 2020, but that's two years away. So okay. that's why I'm saying next two years I'm focused purely on getting more youth in politics in but Bihar. But that's interesting. 20, uh, you know, uh, next assembly elections 2020, you could be fighting I could if party so desires, but you know, we we have an option. You, If you want to be uh, part of the legislature there, mm. you could also be in the upper house in Bihar. Okay. So you need not be fighting. So, is election. that the first step towards a possible Chief Minister Prashant Kishore? <laughs> I mean, no, of course, you, first so you win the election. So out of place. This question is so out of place. It's a completely legitimate question. No, it's not. I'm just. I'm only two months old in politics, ah, right. and my focus <laughs> is to building Kong, uh, JDU. Coming back to how ambitious we want to be, uh, my first target I have set is to become uh, JDU or uh, in terms of size and. Uh, uh, but you know, when you when you look at the Bihar landscape, who is your real target? Because is it the RJD or is it even the BJP? Because in these recent Patna University elections, it was actually you versus the ABVP, and you won. Yes. So you were fighting your own ally. But we we were not allies in the universities. They have been fighting 25 years and they have been defeating us. So this time it was my turn, our turn, and huh. I'm glad we came out winner. But that but is, is the main threat for you in Bihar, Lalu Yadav, or his Lalu Yadav Parivar, I, or I, the, Sang, I, the, the BJP Parivar. I, I do not see the threat. My I have set a target that we, JD as a JDU we should aim to become what we were in 29 to 2010, hmm. which is about 120 MLAs and uh, or. 20 odd MPs in Lok Sabha that we achieved uh, while we were in uh, alliance with BJP. Right now we are down to 70 MLA and a uh, few M MPs. So my first target is to take JDU where it was at its uh, okay, peak so we are out and of then we'll see from there. I'm told we're out of time. Let me just go back to try and push you on the one thing which you didn't answer. Yeah. You did say that Modi should be more than, Prime Minister should be more benevolent, but you don't, you haven't answered the question. What I do you think? I did not say Prime Minister, I said Leader, uh, big leader should be more benevolent. Mr. Right. You, you, po you asked me one thing. Okay, uh, answer, answer me this. What is, where do you think the BJP script is going wrong? What, what is the, if you were to identify one fundamental mistake they're making, what would that be? They could take more people along, political parties, uh, 
people who are not necessarily 100% aligned to their thinking or thought process or work method. They, okay. can, they can be a little bit more uh, inclusive. Inclusive. Okay. So in a way, it, uh, it ties into what you said about uh, NDA. About yeah, NDA and it also only, about benevolence. Only, only if they do that, you will realize that there are many parties who are actually fighting Congress slash UPA. Who and they, they would be more than willing along. to uh, come on this side. Okay, all right. Prashant Kishore, it's a pleasure talking to you. Thanks Same very here. much thank indeed. You. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you very thank much you. indeed for our audience thank for you. joining us. A uh, round of applause to you as well. And yes. of course to all our viewers who are watching on Twitter. That's it on this edition of the NDTV Election Town Hall. But we will be back with many more such events with the Game Changers of 2019. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs>